Multiple lawmakers on Capitol Hill are calling for action after that school shooting in Nashville. But top Democrats are acknowledging that new gun safety legislation is unlikely to pass anytime soon. During a speech in North Carolina today, President Biden again called on Congress to pass an assault weapons ban in response to the shooting. Pass it. This should not be a partisan issue. It's a common sense issue. We have to act now. People say, why do I keep saying this if it's not happening? Because I want you to know who isn't doing it, who isn't helping to put pressure on them. Yes, we have both ends of Pennsylvania Avenue covered. Nicole Killian and Weijia Jang join us now. Nicole is CBS News congressional correspondent and Weijia is CBS News senior White House correspondent. Great to see you both. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, Weijia, I want to start with you because we just played that sound from the president. Um, this seems like kind of a, uh, a playbook of sorts that the White House uh, administers where unfortunately you have a school shooting, uh, you have a Congress really unwilling or unable to act, and then you have the president calling for action kind of walk us through what the White House is is trying to do here given that we know what you know that that these sides on Capitol Hill are, are pretty immovable. Yeah, Caitlin, you're absolutely right. That clip could have been after numerous uh, school mm -hmm. shootings, mass shootings that have happened uh, since the president took office, because, frankly, there's only so much he can say and do. And he really laid that out at every chance he got today, calling on lawmakers to act to do more, because, as he said today, um, his executive authority has run out. And it was very limited to begin with, because he can't change the law. He can't ban assault rifles. He can't implement so-called red flag laws that allow courts to temporarily seize firearms from anyone um, who is deemed a threat and dangerous to themselves or others. And that's precisely why, Caitlin, he continues to say, look, this lies on lawmakers. Um, the problem is that uh, so far they have not reached any sort of compromise when it comes to a complete ban of weapons. But um, we should uh, take this moment, though, to remind people that under President Biden, as you mentioned um, during our earlier conversation, uh, Caitlin, today, that, you know, he was able to sign a gun bill into law that was the most significant piece of uh, reform in nearly 30 years since 1994, when there was an assault weapons ban implemented, but expired after a decade. Um, and so even though there has not been a complete ban, there have been millions and millions of dollars allocated to allow states to implement those so-called red uh, flag laws and, you know, the the effort is ongoing. So I think, you know, the White House and the president is aware that he can't not say anything, but he is very limited in what he can say. And so now what we are hearing um, is that, you know, he's turning up the pressure. He wants the American public to know um, its lawmakers and wants them to know which lawmakers particularly are against uh, the ban of assault rifles. Yeah, we just, that's a really interesting point, kind of this message geared towards the public more so than uh, Congress kind of knowing what he's up against with a divided Congress. Um, you mentioned the bill that was signed into law last year. Nicole, um, you know, that was obviously passed after Uvalde and was kind of an acknowledgment that that's as far as Congress could go. Uh, let's take a little bit of a listen to the reaction that we heard from lawmakers, and then I'll get your thoughts on the other side. I'm certain that, that politics will wave into everything, but right now I'm not focused on the politics of the situation. I'm focused on the families and the victims. The American people deserve a fight, and we need that fight to be about common sense measures like safe storage and better background checks, but also an assault weapons ban. I'm not very hopeful, yet we have to try. And it comes down to a basic question for the voters of America. If you're sick and tired of worrying whether your kids or grandkids are going to come home safely from school each day or from the movie or out in the grocery store, will you do something about it? Will you ask candidates for Congress where they stand on banning assault weapons, military assault weapons? So, Nicole, Ouija had mentioned that that sound we heard from Biden could have been something that he said after uh, any other shooting. I mean, I think you could say the same for what we're hearing on Capitol Hill. 
Yeah, well, keep in mind, too, I mean, these are societal problems that are multifaceted. So, uh, you know, it requires a holistic and comprehensive approach, and certainly a legislation is one way to address that. Uh, but as uh, those lawmakers noted, you know, right now, uh, there does not appear to be uh, a consensus about a path forward uh, legislatively because of some of the political dynamics here on Capitol Hill in terms of having a Republican House majority and a Democratic Senate. You know, in terms of the response that we've heard from lawmakers, uh, you know, you heard from Tennessee Senator Haggerty there. I mean, this is his home state saying, I'm not even going to touch the politics right now. And that's kind of what we have heard from a number of congressional Republicans today. Uh, Senate Republican Whip John Thune, who, uh, you know, delivered a press conference uh, earlier today in uh, Senate uh, Minority Leader McConnell's absence, said, you know, he thinks that it's premature right now to even discuss legislation at this point because we don't know all the facts uh, that have happened with this situation in Nashville. You know, Democrats, on the other hand, many of them have been uh, calling for action, uh, and some of them do support the idea of an assault weapons ban. Leader Schumer said that, you know, it's still a matter of trying to find the votes. Keep in mind, the House passed an assault weapons ban in the last Congress. It wasn't taken up in the Senate. Uh, you know, unclear if the majority leader regrets not bringing that up or if he will move forward with that in, in this Congress, uh, you know, given that some of his members do support, and we are hearing calls for that in the House as well, uh, you know, because they have already passed legislation in, in past Congresses, and those who supported that legislation just sent a letter late today demanding that House Republicans uh, take up an assault weapons ban or at least hold a vote. And now, in terms of Speaker McCarthy trying to get reaction from him, uh, you know, reporters have asked him multiple times since this shooting happened yesterday yesterday, and he still has yet to respond in any capacity uh, about this shooting. Oh, interesting point. Yeah, we'll keep an eye out for whether he responds. Uh, Ouija, you know, the president made these remarks today as he was on the road, which also kind of shows that um, time and time again we see, uh, you know, starting out trying to focus on one thing and, and yet another uh, mass shooting that the president has to respond to. But tell us a little bit more about what he was doing today on the road. He was in North Carolina. That's right. He is on a big infrastructure tour um, to remind people of uh, the bill that he signed into law um, that provides uh, billions of dollars for new infrastructure, new jobs. And this is really a concerted effort by the White House to remind the public about some of his accomplishments. It is very well known that this president believes that um, one of the faults uh, when he served as vice president under the Obama administration was that there weren't enough victory laps for uh, successes. And it's no surprise that as uh, we are anticipating a formal announcement for a reelection for uh, the president, that he is now going to be fanning out along with other administration officials um, to different parts of the country to tout these accomplishments, to, uh, you know, cut ribbons, to uh, get shovels in the ground, to remind people that those dollars that uh, he helped broker in Congress are going to use as he uh, looks at the entire economic picture, which, of course, will be a key part of any reelection campaign. Yeah, it will be really interesting to see which lawmakers join him on those trips as well as they are all running for re-election, too. Um, Nicole, back over to Congress. Um, last week, we were talking about the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and what Congress would do in reaction to that. They are now having hearings. I know you've been talking to lawmakers about what the congressional response should be. Um, what are you hearing? What are the next steps here? Well, the next steps are in terms of this hearing that happened uh, with the Senate Banking Committee. Of course, there is the hope that maybe these regulators can come back. They're currently working on conducting a review and also that some of the executives from these failed banks, Silicon Valley Bank, as well as uh, Signature Bank, could come back and testify. You know, I did have a chance to speak to uh, the chair of the committee, uh, Sherrod Brown, as well as Elizabeth Warren, who has been a vocal, uh, you know, uh, supporter of uh, bank regulation and reform. So take a listen to what both of them told me about who's to blame for what happened. There are guilty parties all over in Congress and among the regulators uh, from uh, the Trump administration weakening the rules further, um, but especially the bank executives. 
do you still think there need to be changes at the top? I absolutely think there need to be changes at the top. You know, the vice chair is now conducting a study of what went wrong, and I appreciate that he does that. But Jerome Powell needs to recuse himself. After all, he's the one in charge of the Fed that failed so massively as the principal regulator for SVB. So as you heard, Senator Warren there calling for action at the Fed. And, you know, broadly speaking, in terms of uh, lawmakers, uh, you know, a lot of the questioning in today's hearing was about what uh, these regulators knew and when they knew it, uh, because clearly uh, they were uh, aware that there were some issues with this bank as early as 2021. And, uh, you know, they really tried to wave away responsibility in terms of saying, hey, we let these banks know. And ultimately, it was them to make reforms. So uh, lawmakers still left this hearing with a a lot more questions uh, than answers, so I would expect more scrutiny of these banks uh, to come in addition to a potential legislative action. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that for sure. Well, Nicole Killian and Weijia Jang, you covered a lot for us today. We really appreciate your time and reporting.